Welcome to your Flame Fundamentals training. In this video, you'll start putting your first edit together. So you'll learn how to create sequences, markup sources for editing, quick drag and drop editing, append editing, and finally, viewing your edit with the different player options. When it comes to working in Flame, you can choose to display either frames or timecode. This is totally interchangeable and can be toggled with the keyboard shortcut. I prefer to see timecode when editing. Now, sequences can be placed anywhere in the media panel, like source clips. However, to manage sequences in the desktop, there is a dedicated sequences reel. So, either in the reels view or media panel, right click over the sequences reel and create a new sequence. In the New Sequence Creation window, give your sequence a name. As for resolution, you can dial in your own settings or use one of the supplied presets. This footage originated from a RED camera, so choose the 2K spherical menu 2048 by 854. Choosing the right resolution at the start will prevent any unnecessary scaling of your footage. The start timecode can be altered if you wish, but the default timecode can be changed in the main preferences within the Timeline tab. Create the sequence and it will appear in the Sequences reel. If you wish to modify the newly created sequence, simply right click on it and choose Reformat. This will allow you to change resolution, timecode, etc. The small film strip tells you that this is a sequence and not a source clip. The red triangle indicates that the sequence is open and ready for editing. You can see its timeline at the bottom of the screen by switching to the Timeline tab with the sequence's name and the red indication. You can open as many sequences as you like, and their tabs will appear here. But only one sequence can be active at a time to receive any edits. To close a sequence, simply click the X on the tab. And to reopen a sequence, just use the right click menu. When it comes to marking up a source clip, you have two different approaches with the player. You could use the single player, where you could switch between the source and record view. Or you could switch to the source sequence player, which presents a more traditional NLE feel for editing. So you select your source clip in the media panel and run through your clips using the source player. When you get to your start frame, click the IN button. An endpoint appears in the time bar. Now you can use the remainder of the source for the edit, or you can move further down the source clip and mark an out point on an appropriate frame. If you need to remove the IN or OUT marks, you can click the pull down menu and remove them via the Mark submenu. Even quicker would be to use the keyboard shortcuts. Drag and drop editing works like any other NLE you may have used in the past. You can either drag the clip from the media panel or the source player and drop it into the sequence. Now there are two editorial functions which can affect drag and drop editing Ripple and Snap. With Ripple off, drag and drop editing overwrites any segments already present in the edit. This is indicated by the red icons. When Ripple is enabled, the icons are now yellow and any drag and drop editing will splice into the segments and push the latter ones further down the edit. Now let's consider the Snap function with drag and drop editing. When it is off, you can drag and drop segments anywhere in the edit with no restrictions or accuracy. By toggling Snap on, any drag and drop editing will snap to the various components of the timeline. This includes positioner, cut points, transitions, etc. Without using any keyboard shortcuts, you will always snap the first frame of the segment to any components in the sequence. If you want to snap using the last frame of the segment, hold CONTROL and drag and drop the segment. 
Now if you have a bunch of sources you've marked up, and you want to add them to the end of the edit, you have a couple of options. You can select the first clip in the media panel and go to the editorial operations. In the pull-down menu, you will find the append edit operation, which will always add the segment to the end of the sequence. Using the keyboard shortcut, you can make quick work of selecting sources and editing them to the end of the timeline. Now a faster but different approach would be to hold CONTROL and select the segments in the order you would like. When you drag and drop the sources to the end of the edit, the segments will be assembled in the order of the selection. Now that you've got your basic edit down, you can review the sequence using a variety of player controls. Firstly, it does not matter if you're using the single player or source sequence players. You can drag the positioner in the edit, or use the scrub bar above the player controls. Just press the play button to play down the sequence. When you click and hold down the play button, you will find a variety of modes you can set for playback. Play direction, regions and behaviours. All very handy tools for reviewing the edit. Finally, to review the edit without the interface getting in the way, you can click the full screen button, and all the player controls will be at the bottom of the screen. When you move the cursor off the controls, they move off screen, leaving you with a full frame view. All your keyboard shortcuts continue to work as expected, and any time you place the cursor at the bottom of the screen, the controls will reappear. Click the full screen button once more to return to the Flame interface. Please move on to the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Flame Learning channel. Thanks for watching.